next hour. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. This is Karen Newman. This is the Saturday Human Colony Hukalo webinar. Today we have a special guest, Lou Martin, who I'll introduce in just a moment. Hi, everyone. This is Karen oh, Newman. This is the that's Saturday me on the, Human Colony Wow. Hukalo that's webinar. me on YouTube. Do you hear it? Sorry yes, about that. Yes, we do. Well, you get to hear it. It's so nice that you get to hear it twice. Oh, that's me on the. Wow. <laughs> that's me on YouTube. Do you hear it? Uh, the professionality just <laughs> kind of went right out the window there. Anyway. Um, well, you might want to turn that down so we don't have a constant. I did. I turned it off. Oh, very good. Huh? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, where was I? Oh, this is Human Colony. This is Saturday. It's the, web, uh, the Saturday channeling webinar. Our guest is Lou Martin. And to let you know, this is a free webinar. So uh, our Google room is open. If you're interested in coming in, you can get a link on uh, Google Plus, which go to my page and you can find the link for the room or you can find it on the Hukalo uh, site on YouTube. I mean, excuse me, on Facebook, the Hukalo site, the link is posted. And if you would like to become a member of Human Colony, you can join at hukalo.org, and that gets you into all of the paid webinars that are with Jim Charles every two weeks that we have. Also, coming up in August is the uh, August Ascension Workshop in Dansville, New York. It's August 16th through the 21st, and it's $400 for five nights. That includes all your food and your lodging and all the classes like Galactic Reiki, channeling, and telepathy classes that will be given by Max Rumpel and Jim Charles. So if you feel like that's somewhere you'd like to be, there's going to be a lot of wonderful people. I know Ava is going to be there. She confirmed earlier, and I know a couple others will be there. So go to hukalo.org and look for the workshop. So... Let me tell you who we have in our room. We have in the room, we have Christine, Ava, Micheline, Stephanie, Steve, myself, and of course, Lou Martin. Yay. Yay, sitting amongst the Worcestershire sauce and the oregano. The kitchen, we call it, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The brightest, best signal in the house, so there awesome. we go. We, well, I appreciate you moving around, and I don't know if you're sitting on the stove, but. No. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, very, very Thanks, Karen. I'm th uh, gl glad for the invitation again. Thank you for having me we're, back. We're happy to have you back. Thank you, dear. So we're going to just start with a little prayer to center ourselves. So go ahead, close your eyes, turn within, take a deep breath. You might want to put a hand to the heart to just get very peaceful, very still, very centered. And we're just conscious that this is a time of great change and great healing on our planet and in our lives. Father, Mother, God, in dwelling Holy Presence, we give thanks for this time with other awakened and awakening souls and spirits. We call forth the higher self, the soul and spirit of each and every one of us. And we give thanks for sacred moments such as this, when we truly turn in the direction of love and light, and we ask to be clear and open instruments for Almighty God, for peace, for healing, for courage, for clarity, for wisdom, for forgiveness, for compassion and kindness and mercy, and that which humanity is seeking to find within its own nature. Use us, Father, Mother, God, this day for your divine and joyous purpose, that we may be a, a light unto those that see the world as only darkness, that we may be a place of peace to those who see the world as only fear. Father, Mother, God, we know you're at work in, through, and as our lives, and we give thanks for this. We rest in this. We let it be. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. Thank you. For the people who haven't met you and or uh, heard of you before, why don't you give just a quick... Uh, introduction of who you are and and how you've how you've gotten to where you are now and and, sure. and primarily the stuff that you talk about. Hi, Alex. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Happy to. Well, thanks everyone for being here and thank you again, Karen. Um, so I've been on this little uh, spiritual journey here consciously for the last thirty years since the harmonic convergence in August of 1987 when I had a Kundalini awakening, and um, I've been studying with spirit guides Lazarus, Doctor Peebles. Um, the Council of Love, the Council of Light, many wonderful 
uh, spirit teachers, the Pleiadians, uh, yeah. And so over the last 30 years, I've been very blessed to uh, learn to listen to, trust, and follow my inner guidance. And uh, the guides that I channel are called divine love, which is basically my higher self and whatever energy is best available to work with me and through me to help the people that I'm in service to, like your beautiful selves here today. And um, yeah, it's a joy to be here with you. Uh, I do one-to-one -one sessions and groups, of course. I have a channel book called The Invitation, which is an ebook, which is volume one of uh, a series that I'm putting together, which will be a printed book at some point in the near future. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm delighted to be with uh, the Hugo community again on a blazingly hot summer Saturday afternoon. Well, we're delighted to have you. Um, we were talking earlier just about, you know, uh, the perceptions of the things going on in the world and how yeah. some things seem to be, you know, things seem to be accelerating as far as how how things are moving forward. And um, I know for me, sometimes I'm struggling with, you know, balancing all of that energy and, and knowing how to balance it. And I'm wondering, is it in your perception that it's accelerating or is it in oh, your yeah. perception is growing? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, do you have any sort of feedback as to, and if anybody wants to jump in in this part of the conversation, I'm happy to have you jump in. That sure. Do you, do you feel, do you have any recommendations on really how to deal with those energies? Yeah, no, it is it is the theme of our time, Karen, as we were saying, absolutely. Uh, so my favorite quote from my guides is, the heart knows what the mind struggles to believe. Mm. And, you know, uh, I think of the analogy of the four blind men holding the elephant. Yeah. And one says it's a snake, and the other says it's a rope, and the other says it's a wall, and the other says it's a tree. And, you know, we all only have a piece of the puzzle, small piece, emphasis. Uh, no matter how far we go on our journey, it's not, it's just a small piece. So uh, for me, the higher we want to go and the, the vibration is getting higher and higher on the planet, the more grounded we all need to be. So healthy food, healthy body, uh, go into peace as often and as deeply as possible. Keep a journal every day so you're in touch with your feelings and you have time and space to process what's been happening, what's happening, what could happen, all of that. Uh, those are meditation, affirmation, prayer. Those are my tools to stay sane. Right. Okay. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions for Lou or that we can start? If you're okay, we can start with questions if you have them. If not, we will continue the conversation. Anyone? Questions? No? Okay. Well, <laughs> so... For, 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 my, for my question for you, because I think things t tend to come in themes and in waves, mm -hmm. don't you? I don't yeah. know. If you see it in spirituality, like you saw in the, around the 80s, everyone was thinking about angels. Mm -hmm. you know, know your angels, know your this. Then it became uh, different, you know, different energies. And it's moved more into like our ET friends, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How how do you how do you see that progressing and changing and, and why do you think that that is do you think that's an awareness situation do you think it's a trend do you think it's it's something of both Sure yes it's 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 both uh, uh, you know uh, belief is the slipperiest thing in the universe yeah. because we will prove to ourselves what we are willing and able and ready to believe and as uh, Jesus says it is done unto you as you believe. Right. So, you know, uh, we're all working on uh, healing ourselves, awakening ourselves from the victim consciousness that says that we're not enough and there isn't enough and we don't have enough and this kind of thing. So the angels, the beings of light, uh, the, the ETs, those that are more conscious and have uh, the bigger picture, you know, through those of us that have been open and receptive and, and willing and available, They've started to be able to communicate with us and then communicate through us. So, you know, um, if we're dedicated and devoted to loving service, then, you know, the obstacles will be removed, the conflicts will be dissolved, the, the bridge will be found, uh, there will always be a way. 
but the dance for every human on the planet is to keep tuning in, keep getting grounded, keep surrendering to the heart, keep uh, keep making peace with what is and finding the opportunity rather than judging ourselves, judging each other, you know, this kind of thing. Keep, uh, keep the ego on a short leash and the heart leading the way. Yeah. Can you define loving service? Well, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I could ask you the same thing, couldn't I? And you'd have a, you'd have a brilliant answer as well, I'm sure. That would be brilliant. It would be the, my understanding and the best of my possible. That's all I'm asking you for. But I, sure. I think we talk about service a lot. Yeah. Um, and so how do you how do you see service? Right. So, you know, uh, doing my human best every day to see everyone as a reflection of my own uh, loving desire to know my oneness with God and with life. And I will forget that over and over again. And the ego and the mind will keep kicking in and judging, criticizing, arguing, doubting, resisting, controlling all of that. So, you know, it's like swatting the flies away from our faces, uh, you know, from time to time. But um, uh, the more uh, the more the journey unfolds, and the more devoted and surrendered and trusting I am of the process, the greater the intimacy, the greater the synchronicities, uh, the greater the opportunities. Uh, and so, you know, it's to be aware that there is a there is an order to all of this. There's an author to this story. Um, what happens, of course, is we get so polarized by the dramas and we make everything so uh, important rather than stay connected to the bigger picture. So for me, loving service for myself is to keep coming back to peace. And if I can be at peace with myself and if I can treat myself the way I want to be treated and, and offer to uh, extend that to others, then I think I'm, I'm doing my job. Okay, nice, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Ava, she has a question. Ava, go ahead. Now I can ask. Okay. Um, yes, I, <laughs> yes, I do have a question. And thank you for much, uh, so much for uh, talking about this loving service. Um, it seems like that most of my loving service is during astral. Um, I just find out that um, I am working a lot in astral, which is which is actually was great, made me feel very good that I am benefiting i mean not benefiting but giving um yeah. well giving is benefiting so it's kind of well my question is um <laughs> i you. seem to have more life in astral than i have in my regular life yeah it is a funny thing but i just sometimes wake up so tired mm. i will have some specific question during the channeling part about yes, what I'm sure. um, but my cautious mind doesn't actually know much what astral is so if you can say something explain mm. how it all, all works it would be awesome well wouldn't it i wish i could my friend i think you're probably more of the expert of that than i am quite honestly i think you're my teacher in that area truly <laughs> Truly. Um, but I mean, it's, uh, you know, the phrase from my guides, Ava, and I'd be uh, happy to channel about this and see if we get more about that. Uh, the phrase from my guides is we have a foot in each world. And, you know, we're striving to be a bridge uh, between these different views of reality. Um, and, uh, you know, again, uh, it's like, you know, whatever I've said that has inspired you or touched you, you know, you're here to bring that light onto the planet, to bring your love onto the planet, to shine your light and share your love is the phrase from my guides. So, you know, the, the work is uh, for all of us is to, you know, be very humble and honest and sincere with our relationships and, and how we present spirit to the world because the world sees, uh, is a very anti-spiritual, suspicious, cynical, hostile, dogmatic kind of place when it comes to spirituality in general. Not, not everyone, but in general. So, you know, my, my job description is to be God's holy fool, you know, and to not take it all too seriously, if at all possible, and to uh, just have, look for the f opportunities to have fun, as Abraham says, and to put a smile on my own and others' faces, uh, you know, to be as simple about it as I possibly can. Does that make any sense? Yeah, but it does. Okay. I 
think that this plane got um, the negative forces were really successful with, with this plane. So I think some joy. It, it's it's a great mission. Yeah. Well, that's the work to to lighten up, as we say. Uh, my my friend Dr. Peeble says, as you approach your enlightenment, simply lighten up. Uh, you know, we, we keep, uh, Sting has a great lyric where he says, uh, some battle that I've invented inside my head, you know, and um, uh, uh, do, do we create the darkness or, or is the darkness controlling us or is that just our own confusion and resistance? Um, you know, we all get to decide. For me, I try to keep putting my focus on love and light and peace and blessings and joy and happiness and not uh, try to overcome this darkness quite so much. So you, you are existing regardless, like? Well, it's there, it's the background, but I, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, we have to face uh, these uh, contrasts, but yeah. then what power do we have in relationship to them is the big question, you know? And it's not a, it's not a simple question, but this is the theme recently, Karen, from my guides is, you know, look folks, your mind makes everything very complicated, but your heart says everything's very simple. Yeah. You either feel safe or you don't. You right. either are enjoying your life or you're not. Right. So, you know, that is the devotional process to keep listening and trusting the heart. Right. Regardless of the situation, you can be ha having a great life and you can be having a great time and there can yeah. be a lot of stuff going on and you're still always choosing the positive. Yeah. I, I understand it. I, I, I had, I, I'll just tell everyone here, I just have had a couple weeks of very, uh, yeah, very, just really looking at a lot of stuff that I normally don't look at. And that's probably the problem. My hmm. diet of, of, you know, information that I have allowed me myself to experience mm -hmm. is, is not my generally joyous diet of stuff right, I have allowed myself right. to experience. I really struggled with it and it sure. really sucks you in. It really sucks you dry. I think yeah. at least for me, I mean, oh, yeah. I love you. God, I love every one of you that can stand in it and look at it. But I, I'm, I'll tell you what, I throw up my hands. I, I, I throw up the white flag of yeah. I give up. I, I just can't, I can't do it. I can't look yeah. at it. It just, yeah. it doesn't serve me at all. It doesn't. Yeah. yeah. And you think you're just looking and then you just, you know, it's, there's, there's, <laughs> no, bo there's no bottom. That's right. It. That's right. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's no bottom. Yeah. So for me, it's kind of a relief to be like, okay, I can let this go and not have to deal with this because it's too much. Yeah. I, 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 Karen Newman, hereby say I am not equipped <laughs> to deal with it at all. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 Um, there's a brilliant uh, hypnosis book um, um, whose name escapes me, but she was treating a patient who had a migraine headache. Oh. And she, she asked the patient to, to could, they, she, could they focus on that source of pain in their head? And they did. And they said, yes, it's like a dark area. So she said, go into the darkness. And she, she, so they started to dialogue with the darkness in this, that was causing this person's migraine headaches. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the therapist said, is there someone there I can speak to? And it gave, yes, you know, I'm here. And it said, uh, you know, could you, could you, uh, stop uh, making uh, our friend here suffer uh, in pain. And uh, the darkness said, no, I need his pain in order to exist. And yeah, yeah and she said, okay, well, let's do this. Can, uh, can, you, can you see if there's a point of light inside of you? And the darkness says, yes, it's there, but I'm scared of it. And she said, well, to go into the, and the darkness said, no, I'm Ooh. said, is it our, an angel or a helper in is he freezing for everyone else yeah he's yes. intermittent for me as well okay yeah. let's just give him a second his internet was a little choppy when he first logged on that's why he moved to the the kitchen <laughs> i thought it was a closet <laughs> he's coming out of the closet <laughs> he's in the he's in the uh He's in the cupboard. <laughs> Live from the kitchen cupboard, it's Lou Martin. That's funny. <laughs> oh. You know, sometimes when that internet signal just isn't working. Last week, 
Um, just while we waited for him to come back, I had I had opened all the windows and we got everything ready for the webinar and, and everyone was in. Christine, you were in. There, Lou, we lost you for a little bit. <laughs> oh, there he's lost again. I had gotten everything open and then my whole internet system went down. And that's why Mark ended up posting because, you know, two seconds before the uh, webinar was on, I was gone. So you just never know. Hi, Michelle. So, shh, doggies, no barking. Um, yeah, we're going to have, I'm going to send him a mess. I don't know if he'll get this message. Let me send him a quick message and just say, um, please relog. So, but is anyone else? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just the one who's been struggling this week. And but I've really struggled. Like, like I've never struggled before, um, with with all this stuff going on. Oh. Struggled in struggled in what way, man? Well, I, I think I look too much. You know, you, normally I just keep myself out of the news. I keep myself out of the happenings of what's going on in the world. And for whatever reason, I just started really looking at it and really, you know, watching the news, watching it, talking to people, engaging people who have, I will say m most people in the main world have just diametrically opposed views to what I have. And that's, that's totally cool, you know, but it's a really, it's a really difficult thing to have a conversation when everything you say, you know, they there's you know either it's triggering me or it's triggering them and it's you know trying to find that balance and i just thought you know it's just better when i don't talk about this stuff or think about it too much and uh yeah so that's been my own personal uh, experience this week hey lou you're back he's almost back lou 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 lou, lou. Oh, okay. It's going to have to maybe reload. But so, Michelle, you have the same or no? You can talk. We just talk freely until he comes back in. Anyone else? Oh, yeah, big time. Just, yeah? Yeah, it's in raw. Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, this week was so extremely hot. Yeah. Here, United States East Coast, many of us just, the brains froze. <laughs> See, I don't even have that excuse. It wasn't. <laughs> yes, the energy from the heat of the of, of America has no. But I've been watching American TV and I've been watching American news on, through my VPN, which allows me to see everything. I think I'm gonna just keep it off. I have to be honest. Yeah, that's not what you want to do when you want to cheer up. <laughs> yes, yes, the news I intended to stress you out. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so, I had I actually heard a newscaster say, "Are you afraid yet?" And I thought, "Wow, yeah, <laughs> what, a sub exactly. what a subliminal yeah. message that is." Hey, Lou, are you back? Mm. Lou Martin, whose beard is longer in the picture than it is in real life. Come on, Lou! Come on! <laughs> You know what, Lou, maybe if you can, just don't turn your camera on. Maybe just leave, just do your mic. And that might help with, uh, uh, with the, with the lag. Anyone? Hmm. So, well, we'll just wait. Well, I yeah. have a question to Lou. He looks so much like a lion. Is he a lion? See? I don't know. Like yeah. the maze, you know, like I, yeah, um, yeah you know, I, I don't know. Well, I, people, this is the maze. I don't know if, if people look like sort of their, uh, that would be interesting to know how much people really look like, you know, whatever their genetic background would be. Like I met a woman, I did a conference uh, just two weeks ago, and I promise you there's a woman and she's all about dolphins. She knows everything about dolphins. And she is a dolphin. If you see her, her physicality, she's like a dolphin. She even has this kind of very strange voice that you could swear was like 
if a dolphin could talk. Well, so I think there's something to that. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, there is, um, in my Fendorian life, I am supposedly um, <coughs> of kind of pearlescent orange. Mm -hmm. And that's my absolutely favorite color in this lifetime. Oh, yeah. As humans. So uh, there is something which sinks in from, from other lives. Yeah, I think so. They they just did a they just released a study that's saying that your memory was is within your DNA. That they've proven it now. So people who have certain kind of phobias or uh, um, how do you call it? You know, fears. They, they focused fears. on the they focused on the trauma things, but I think it's not just trauma. Um, that uh, oh. He's saying, he's, Lou said, I've gone back three times and I'm just looking on the screen. I don't have any audio. Can you make sure that your mic is set? You have to go to the top, Lou. There's a little um, gear called settings at the very top. And just make sure that your microphone uh, is tuned to your actual microphone on your computer. And he's, he's not hearing me because now he's logged off again. Shoot. Okay. Let me let me just type that to him. Um, but please please continue what you were saying, Ava. The, I, I just my point was that they just have the um, the uh, the DNA thing. I think it's also it doesn't have to only just be trauma that's embedded in your DNA. I think it's other things that can also come through memory wise, like the color that you're drawn to. Yeah, it does because um, about the trauma. Um, for many incarnation as a in human lives, I supposedly was really pretty much amazing. And then uh, this lifetime is not so great. And when I asked some guide of mine, he said that it started to incarnation ago in the United States, actually when I was really harm, harmed. So yeah. definitely the trauma goes from one life to the other until it gets healed. Because I understand in this lifetime, I'm already pretty much close to being healed from what happened there. So it definitely, definitely goes through lifetime to lifetime, like you're saying. Yeah, cool. Hey, Lou, are you there? Can you talk? Can we hear you? Uh. Hmm. Karen, did he reboot? Sorry, say that again. I did. I asked him to reboot. Yeah, he should okay. reboot his computer. Sometimes the microphone gets the the link of the mic. It, it gets somehow severed yeah. in the uh, connection. If you can restart your computer, Lou, and try again, I I, I appreciate it. You Let's send them love and point. protection because maybe yeah. it's interfered by other forces. Okay. Let's send him love and protection because so his computer works and his sound works. His, his, his proverbial uh, throat chakra <laughs> is no longer blocked electronically. So let's take a deep breath in and in your own way, send good energy and put a wall of protection around him, his, his electronics, boost them with love energy so that he can come back in. Amen. And so mote it be, as Christine would say. I always ask Archangel Michael to be back in the outside. Uh manipulations awesome archangel michael's the best one he's so you know yes and take names <laughs> yeah. yeah i once did a house clearing with archangel michael with a friend of mine and it was like there was a one moment where this sort of purple cyclone of energy just swept through the house i mean i i can honestly say there was like a breeze that came through the house because your our hair kind of blew back Hey, Lou. 
Bye, Lou. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he loves doing it too. That's what's awesome. He's the only being I've channeled so far. But uh, oh yeah, when did you yeah. channel him? Uh, with the help of an instructor. Um, okay. Mainly, he just told me to to not dislike the people that oppose me or think that I'm nuts, just to see them and let them be. So that was his main yeah. message to me. But you can't yeah. please all of the people all the time. That's for Hi, sure. Lou. Hey, hey Lou. there. There hey, is. yay, there yes, he is. Yes, we did it. He's back. Thank you, awesome. God. Thank you. We, we sent so, you energy at this. You're very kind. Eva. That's lovely. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, I Steve, appreciate that. Steve got uh, Archangel Michael involved. You know, it's oh, always that's a good sign nice. that that happens. You. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Very good. Okay. I, I um, fist bump Mike. <laughs> excellent, excellent. <laughs> did you fist bump him? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I do all the time on my, my mind. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so such a guy thing, right? Like, the guys have such a different approach. You know, where women are always hugging their beings and men are like fist bumping. <laughs> my, Michael like melds to whatever your personality is, whatever your energy is. So for me, yeah. he's like my best friend from high school. You know, but yeah, he's gonna be awesome. different for everyone. That's cool. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, Lou. Where were we? Well, I, did I just was telling the story about the darkness facing uh, the light within it and long story short yeah no it's it's a helpful it's a helpful tale i'm sorry it got lost in the, no, in the shuffle please go start again well start again it's just basically that we all have this darkness inside of us and if we if we are afraid of the darkness of course then the darkness controls us but if we realize that there is light within the darkness and we look for the light within the darkness, then the light will shine through the darkness and transform the darkness. That's that's what happens in, in, in the story. Very good. Very good. I find it very helpful, yes. There was a guy on the news that just gave a really brilliant, uh, also a very brilliant commentary on the, it was the, it was the two choices and one was to choose only to see love and light always, or the other ones. I, I can't, never mind. I can't remember. It was quite along the same lines. So, yeah, yeah. As you said, we get, we all get lost in the darkness uh, unless we shine our light or find some light there to, to help us through. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, I, if there's any questions in the room, please put your, put your um, message in the group chat, but I do have two questions from the YouTube and that I, if I can yeah. ask you them. Um, the first question is from um, ooh, Udayaman Shukla. And, and the question is, I, I got intuitive downloads, which suggests that for many people, consuming meat or dairy products helps strengthen their divine masculine energy, which is important for this planet. Please give your views on this. Well, bless you, you know, uh, it's done unto you as you believe, my friends, and listen to your body. Your body never lies. So some people need one thing, some people need something else. You know, do what works for you and, uh, yeah, uh, take it from there. Uh, there, isn't, uh, there isn't one way for everyone to do anything. All right. All right. Okay. Um, I hope that's satisfactory. If you have another question, just follow it up in the chat. Um, yeah. Peter P., says i think this planet needs more divine feminine energy <laughs> to bring into balance with the masculine and then the question i, I think that was a comment for the uh, meat question and then the question is recently i heard the news that the new runway fashion for men became feminized is this an indication and a physical manifestation of the masculine energy coming into balance with the feminine Wow, well, that's the long way around the barn, my friend, but that's yeah, fine. That's actually a good question. If it, if it excites you, be my guest. Uh, take, have at it, Karen. Yeah. I, well, I have a, well, that was my, I have a comment on that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, there's, a, there's a really wonderful uh, co um, uh, comic book writer that I really like, not because I really follow comics, um, but, but I just like him as a person. His name's Grant Morrison. He's, from, he's Scottish. He was the one who did the Batman comics. He's, he's done uh, a lot of the Marvel Universe comics. He's also a very spiritual guy. But he talks about how over time, because he was, he was from Scotland at a time when, you know, it was like the goth guys. And then 
that, that things go through cycles, you can see in the trends where as people become more angry about things, uh, the clothes become darker, they become tighter, um, the hair gets shorter, everything gets more contracted. And sure. then as you can see in the trends where people feel a little bit more free, the clothes become looser, they become longer, you know, and that they go through these kind of cycles. And you can actually, he was, he's, he was saying you can actually predict sort of the, the way people are based on their clothing choices. So I think there's a lot to Peter's question because it can also, it also has to do with male female balance. Is the male more dominant? Is the male more, you know, or, or is it more in balance with each other? I think it's a really good question. I don't have the, I don't have an answer to if that's yes or no, but I think it's worth exploring because it, it does come in trends. And if you look at how the sixties moved into the seventies and, you know, the sixties was very, you know, very low riders, but very hippie-ish clothes. And then they started to get more, you know, broader and broader. And in the eighties, they, you know, it, it's expanded. I think it's quite interesting. Uh, well, to me, yeah, the whole culture is a mirror of what we value, you know, yeah. and it's, it, it's a, it's a great thing because we live in a hugely, uh, you know, varied, different, variety. You know, there are styles all over the planet. Um, I'm, I'm more interested in substance, you know, than style uh, in general. Sure, but it does. But, but, but everything is a reflection. You know, art is a reflection of the time. Art is a reflection. Music is a reflection many times of the times. Sure. So. Of yeah, course. It, it does. Yeah. And those are it's also not, they also creative expressions of our usness of who we are as a society, who we are um, as a group of people. Yeah, that's fine. It doesn't yeah. light my candle, but it's absolutely true. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't. It's not. Yeah. I mean, it's not for everybody, but for some other people, it may be. You know, in what? Yeah. Well, yeah. To, to me, uh, the music, uh, the the. Th the, the movies, uh, the stories, uh, really, you know, are, are what changes people's minds, mm -hmm. you know, when we have, uh, like the stories right now of these boys trapped in a cave in Thailand, you know, that's extremely captivating because it's a very dramatic situation mm -hmm. and people are, you know, wanting them to be rescued and following all of this. Um, so we see ourselves in each other, you know, is right. the simple way to talk about it. Right. But I absolutely agree that the divine feminine is uh, the way my teacher Lazarus put it. He says she's never been, she's never gone anywhere, but she's returning, and that's right because you know when we did not feel safe to be flowery and expressive and vulnerable and and uh, create and sustain intimacy, then we've created these cultures that are very uh, militaristic and um, masculine and patriarchal. So yeah. yeah, somebody made the comment there. Uh, you know. Uh, and I grew up with the Beatles. So I've said this many times that that was my ground of being for the first 20 years of my life. And uh, yeah. very grateful for the music, the culture, uh, the fashion, all of that. So, I mean, I, I do, I can relate to it, but at, as spiritual beings, uh, you know, here on the leading edge of things, uh, we're, we're, we're being called to express our values. So yes, however you see that invitation to bring more of your inner self out into the world with your values, I think that's that's what's exciting to me. Can you tell? Because well, I, I see some chat going on about masculine and feminine and everything. Why don't, you, if you can? Sure. Um, <laughs> if, I don't. You know. Yeah. If, you, if you're getting channel information or or however it's coming through your yeah. filter, um, maybe talk about what the balance of divine feminine looks like. You know, sure. we all talk sure. about the resurgence of it. I mean, we see it evidencing, but what is it we're going for here in this well, yes. divine feminine resurgence? Yes. Well, the magic word is balance. Yeah. Okay. And see the feminine divine or otherwise is brilliant at balance. And uh, that that's the part of us men and women uh, that is always looking for equality and justice and compassion and inclusiveness and um, these beautiful values, mothering and, and uh, love and all these beautiful, wonderful values. The way my guides have put it to me, Karen, is the feminine is the emotional and the spiritual archetypally. 
and the masculine is the mental and the physical. So the spiritual and the emotional are always in movement, always in flux, always changing, never the same twice. And the masculine is fixed, solid, focused, uh, you know, uh, physical, reliable in this kind of way, predictable in this kind of way. And so the balance is that, of course, we need each other. We need each other deeply, deeply, deeply. And the world we're entering into, we're probably going to need each other more than we ever have before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so spirit is here to help us as we will listen to, trust, and follow our inner guidance. Archangel Michael and uh, Ava with her uh, connection and all of everyone else here. Wonderful. I mean, it's a, it's a, a wealth of um, uh, beautiful spiritual energies here today. It's a joy. Uh, so we're all wanting to find that balance in our own hearts and in our lives and then generate the, the visions, the energy, the ideas that help people to find that in the world. I, I have a question and I'm a woman asking this question, but all right. um, I'm asking it sort of for my male uh, friends. Sure. sure. How do you, how do you, how do you as a man, or this is more asking for my interest, but also what would you recommend for men who don't want to be uh, emasculated, who, who shouldn't take this rise of feminine energy as an emasculation. Right. Um, you know, I'm not saying that, that anyone, I hope that that's not happening, but I can imagine from comments that I see that there's this thing of like, well, stay in your place and don't, uh, don't, <laughs> don't rise up because then what happens to me? You know, so how is, what is, sure. what is, what is a man and or woman look like walking around in a balanced feminine masculine energy world brilliant question best question i've had in a long time my friend i love it <laughs> yeah uh and I, I i will attempt to uh, to answer that from what spirit has shown me um yeah. the word is integration hmm. okay and you see uh in my sessions and over the years this is the rule book men are allowed to be angry but can't be sad and women are allowed to be sad but can't be angry so the doorway for women into empowerment is to open their voice, their throat, and be able to express their emotional truth, to assert and express their values. That's, that's, that's the simple general term there. For the men, the doorway is through the man's heart, and it's through grief that we have been all talked out of the uh, integration of our emotional wholeness because uh, softness and feeling and vulnerable and crying and grieving has been seen to be unmasculine and anger and uh, fury and uh, assertion has been seen to be unfeminine. So that's where we've all been out of balance for centuries and that's what you see this particularly in the children of the world now. There is a tremendous commitment to emotional authenticity. So that's what we all need to keep working on and helping each other to find, I believe. So my question is how? Yeah. Um, by, by, absolutely, by this, this is why we are on this path as the healer and the teacher. We've all had our own crises, I know I have and everyone here has, where uh, our limited sense of the rules of life and our identity have been incomplete, hugely, woefully inadequate, and we've been faced with problems that there is no solution in the consensus reality over and over again. So that's where we go, well, maybe there's a loving higher power. Maybe there's a, a God who loves me, a goddess who loves me. Let me learn to tap into that. And so the only way to do it, and you know this as well as anyone here, is by opening our hearts. So this is the, the brave, courageous, messy, sloppy, vulnerable dance that we all signed up to do, to, to be a fool for love, a fool for God, and to learn how to be emotionally authentic with ourselves and each other. That's the brave new world I believe we're entering. So I think that that's the one thing you can say to yourself and you can sort of own your own emotion. Uh, be daring is, is, is in the fact of express what you feel. Yeah. You know, when I first moved to the Netherlands and I don't know if you had this experience in, uh, yeah. in Scotland, Ireland. I don't know how it, uh, I, 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 I want yes. you to be in Scotland. All right. Why? Yeah, moved to Scotland. <laughs> so, um, but I, I know that I had this experience and maybe um, some of the Europeans can comment on this. But when I first moved to Holland, um, 
people would say to me, yes, Americans, they smile all the time. That's really fake. You know, they mm. would say that and they didn't say that with any kind of meanness, but right. that was their, their feeling. And, and because they didn't smile all the time, they didn't feel the need to smile all the time. If they were happy, they smiled. If they weren't happy, they didn't smile. Right. But they right. always see Americans like, uh -huh. <laughs> Jolly. smiling. Yeah. And, and I will say from my own experience, when I was small, I, I had several times where people, you know, you'd be sitting there, you wouldn't be smiling, you'd be just thinking or whatever, and someone goes, smile. Yeah. Smile. Right, like you've dropped your job. You know, and you're just, <laughs> and, and, you, and you were just maybe just, you know, lost in thought or something. Sure, sure. And, you know, and or if you would express anger as a girl, they would always oh. say, honey, you get more flies with honey than you get with, you know. It's like yeah. you were never allowed to sort of really, whether your anger was justified or not. I mean, that's that's your own situation. Sure. But if sure. you felt anger, and especially with kids, kids aren't really faking a lot of stuff. I think kids right. are pretty organically. They If they're angry, they're angry. If they're happy, they're happy. Yeah. You know, yes. But we condition them. That's right. We condition well, them. Don't, don't yes. take that frown off your face. You know, especially the girls, take that uh, frown off your face, honey. You got to smile. Look pretty. You know. Right. Yeah. You know? right. and, and I encountered that when I came here, that people were just like, you know, the, their image of an American is this sort of very big, you mm -hmm. know, Julia Roberts with a lot of teeth and, and a big mm -hmm. smile on her face. Mm -hmm. And their impression is you don't really know what's happening behind that mm -hmm. mask. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, there's a lot of truth in this. I mean, um, emotional authenticity is extremely rare in the world because, as you said, we've all grown up with uh, a lot of shaming is really the word that comes to mind. Yeah. Uh, you know, boys are taught the same thing. Don't be a pussy. Yeah. You know, be a man. Don't be cry. A man. Yeah. Suck it up. Um, be a man. Yeah. Yeah. Man and up. it's right. Man right. Up. And, and, and that's, that's where uh, real emotional authenticity dies for a lot of people is, uh, as, a, as a teenager, because you're right, as children, we're pretty innocent and wide open and very natural. So um, the journey is to come back into that uh, wholeness. So again, I love uh, my guides say to be holy is to be whole and to not be disowning any parts of ourselves and not be projecting ourselves onto others, but to take as much responsibility as we can for the fact of what we feel and what we believe and our impact on each other. So, you know, I, I believe in the third dimension, it was a lot easier to walk around with a mask, whether it was genuine or not. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's possible in the fifth dimension. Right. I yeah, think yeah. we really are called to be very true and honest and sincere. So how do, not only how do we do that for ourselves, which you said, but how do we do that How in our service, in our, uh, genuine loving service, how do we do that for other people? Get, allow for them and to remind ourselves when we see someone experiencing something, right. expressing something to sort of catch ourselves out of our own conditioning. You know? Right, well, that's, that's exactly it. Uh, it we, we, you said it exactly, Karen. We need to be aware of our conditioning as much as we can be. So there is the gift of meditation or for you, your beautiful toning and chanting and, and uh, you know, the work that you do with, uh, with Sanskrit and, and your voice and all of this. Uh, it keeps centering you, uh, it, it, centering us in a deep place, you know, of receptivity and oneness with all that is. So it gets us out of the thinking conditional mind over and over again. Right. Um, you know, I mean, I've been meditating for 30 years now. As, uh, you know, you've been doing it at least that long. So you get more discerning. You get more discerning when you get pulled into your drama or somebody else's drama. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's to be aware I've given my power away to the drama. You see. Yeah. For, for me, it's it really is about peace. If I don't have peace in myself, then how am I going to hold a space of peace and compassion and forgiveness for others to let go of their fears and judgments? That's 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 the dance. Yeah. Uh, Renee uh, uh Newman, who's she's my friend. She's Renee Newman. I'm Karen Newman, but she posted in the chat. Yeah. She said anger suppression leads to physical and mental health issues for both genders. You know, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. She said also, don't take it personally when someone expresses anger or frustration. Yeah, I, I know that my teacher always used to say that um, disease is really anger turned toward, 
turned inwards. That does, but yes, yeah. yes, despair uh, is the way I, I've learned that. Despair and uh, depression, rather, uh, is anger turned in on ourselves, uh, that I'm not okay or that my feelings are not okay. Um, the challenge is, of course, that many girls uh, grow up with men who are very angry, alcoholics, abusive, uh, etc. And so men are uh, allowed to rant and rave and, and threaten and control and be violent in these things in the world. And women get intimidated and, uh, you know, uh, afraid of that anger, which is understandable. The, the key is for all of us, how, what, are, what are the responsible ways for me to acknowledge my grief, anger, sorrow? And that's why, again, it's great that we have safe people that we can be vulnerable and um, do the inner work with so that we can stop judging our feelings and start trusting our feelings. Right. So maybe you can talk to that a little bit because you and I had a conversation about that um, a yeah. little while ago because I was really having a issue with just saying no to someone. Right. <laughs> yes. Well, this is woman's secret powerful word is to be able to say no yeah. without feeling guilty. You see. Feel like because the guilt I felt like I was feeling I had to sort of find every reason why, like I was having to justify my set to myself. Right. The reason right. that I didn't want to do something. Right. Where well, I, you know, my guides. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. And you so, spoke to that about the, you spoke to that about women's conditioning and you said what I, he said, I have this conversation with my female friends at least three times a week. <laughs> oh, to every woman, to every client I work with who's a woman yeah. is basically if I can find where, where we're stuck with men, it's, you know, it's always about self-judgment or, right. you know, if there's a crisis uh, or something from the past that's still haunting us. And so if I can help someone feel safe enough to acknowledge that they are still hurt or angry about something, people say, oh, I've dealt with that. Well, congratulations. Right. But are you at peace with it? Is the question yeah. not not you know? So we don't get we don't get uh, finished. We get better uh, in general. But uh, to come back to peace for a second, uh, if a, if anyone, man or woman, who has not had their voice is encouraged to feel and express their feelings in a safe and supportive way, then they start to get the confidence that they that they can do it in their relationships when they need to when you need to say no. So here's the simple way my guides put it to me. You're meant to feel good all the time, right. period. Okay, the only time you don't feel good is when you focus on something that is not your truth. Mm -hmm. I'm confused, uh, this wasn't what I expected, this wasn't what we agreed upon, etc. That moment when you don't feel good in that moment, that is the place where you need to do something or say something to change the, to change the situation. I'm not okay with that. This isn't what we agreed on. I, that's not, I, I can, can I take some time and think about it? Whatever, whatever that allows us to have a boundary because balance is boundaries, then that gives us the space to come back to ourselves. Yeah. And then we can do, we can say no or uh, whatever we need to say without, see guilt is when I take negative responsibility for other people's unhappiness. Right. You, you're, you're stuck, it's my problem, it's my fault, it's, it's my mistake, whatever. Yeah. Um, so does it make sense? Yeah, it does. I, I, I was just in my mind sort of thinking about the moments where I have no problem saying no. Yes. Like for like this is a very benign thing, but it's Good. it's telling that, you know, I have dogs. Everyone hears them, sees them walking around. Yeah. And sometimes I will watch other people's dogs. Yeah. You know, they can if people are on holiday or whatever and they can bring their dogs. Sure. And I always have you say no to the dogs. No, but I no no no, but I have no. I have the people who want to potentially bring their dog to me. They have to come to me first so that I can meet the dog. We have to see if they fit in my house, you know, and won't be yeah. aggressive to my animals or my cat or whatever. And yeah. and yeah. if it doesn't work, you know, I don't judge the person and or the little dog that it doesn't sure. work with. It's simply like, no, sure. this isn't going to work. And I have no qualms about saying yeah. no. And, and, yeah. You know, and I don't feel bad about it, and it's not an anger. No, it's just you know this this is not going to work out to have this animal in my house for an extended period yes. of time, and I have yes. no problem with it. But then when it so that's very easy for me. Yes. But when it comes sometimes to things like work, you know, right. or right. or uh, 
service to other people, you know, which you think, right. oh, I should be serving this other person, I should be helping them. And everything well, in you is you, like you going, see, ah. you, You've said, you've said the magical disempowering right word. Or relationships where you think, you know, friendship relationships and or romantic relationships, sometimes that no is a little bit harder to come by, even yes. if it's the right thing to do. And well, that, you that's see, just my own personal thing. So. Yes, honey, no, you, God knows you're not alone, my friend. The should, <laughs> the should is, the, is the word, should. Mm. What, is it, what does it mean? There's a critical self looking in on you, trying to talk you into something that you do not want to do. Mm. So my guides say it's very simple. As soon as you hear the word should, you probably should just slap yourself, should, slap your, just slap yourself across the face because it's quicker and easier to acknowledge that you've just given your power away than to keep talking yourself over and over again into things out of guilt and obligation and duty that are not serving you. Yeah. I know, I know. I see the look on your face. I understand, I understand. Well, but you there's, see- There's time for compromise, you know, that's always a big thing. And, you know, is, is it what moment? And then I see Michelle see, covering her see, mouth. You're, you're getting abstract with it. You're getting theoretical with it, Karen. Like you can't hide, Michelle. I'm not being theoretical. I'm actually thinking of many instances. But I'm, I'm just, let me, let me work with you for a second on this. Yeah. We're getting there. I'm saying if you are in your emotional truth in the moment and you're, you're listening to your inner guidance, it says, this is not for me. And then the struggle for mostly the women, God love you, is I'm, I don't want to disappoint someone. I don't want to be seen in some negative light. I, I don't want to be the bad person here. That self-judgment that your ego just stepped in and, and invited you to step into, and then since I can't deal with that in the moment, I just give my power away to something I don't want to do. We all have done it a million times. None of us are alone with this. But this is a brave new world we're being asked to live in, you see. Abraham says, I will do that for you if I can find a way that it doesn't inconvenience me. And you see, what I heard Spirit say is, your dogs give you permission to trust your feelings. Well, fantastic. Isn't that great? Well, no, I mean, it's, it's not even the dogs. It's more like I'm not going to put them in a situation that's going to be, or myself in a situation where it's just going to be un possibly unsafe because one dog could bite another dog and just very disruptive. To right, honey, little happy they, are, house. they are your legitimate excuse to yes. trust your feelings. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You understand? So that's wonderful that you have that in your life. I have one, I have one, I have one good no that I can, I can always trust that I can go to. Well, the yes, but you see. The not so straightforward. I understand. I hear you. But let me give you the last part of the quote. You need to say no to what you don't want. So your yes means something. Mm. Ah, and you see, no one can take our power from us. We can only give it away. And no one will give us our freedom. We have to take it because it's ours. It's all about these conscious choices. Okay. Anyone have any all comments right. on that? Thank you. Jump in, people. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway. Let me get away with that. Thank you. That was good. Ah. Thank you. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 There's a question in the chat about Arcturians. Uh, Tracy's saying good afternoon to you. Great. She loves Lou. Everyone Thank loves you. Lou, Tracy. You're not alone. Okay. Right. <laughs> so good to know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Prajval Seth asks, can you connect with Arcturians? I believe that we can connect with anyone, each one of us, you know, and I'm sure you feel the same. If, uh, if we feel that that is going to be the best next step for us on our, what we're inspired to learn more about and discover more about. The thing that, like I channeled for years the same energy that I'm channeling now, and originally it was told to me that it was the Pleiadians. So I said, okay, fine, it's the Pleiadians. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I let that label go, and it's not important about labels. It's important about the love, the wisdom, and the truth. Yeah. If you feel those three energies in what you're channeling and who you're listening to, then you're on to something. Otherwise, it's it's the ego just keeping you busy. We had a, a we have been doing a channeling. Uh, well, Hukula does a Friday night practice channeling group, and the last yeah. two weeks I've been there yeah. uh, with them, uh, yeah. and we were talking about channeling and choosing who you channel and being chosen by who you channel. Yes. And and my my big uh, my big thing or my big 
communication I feel very strongly about communicating is that it's, 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 it's about the relationship, not only the information that's coming out of you, but the relationship between you and the beings that you are channeling that's so right. that you have that great bond and knowing because it also is just enhancing and growing you yes in, in, yes. in having the relationship to them or he she whatever it is that you're connecting to but that that relationship is is as important if not the most important part of the channeling process oh yeah it has to serve you first yeah and you That's have right. to serve it as well yeah well it, it's coming to you because you are serving it explain well i mean like <laughs> sure sure so it's like we're talking about loving service and like attracts like yeah. so you you you're on your vibration over there i'm on my vibration here uh, as well and everyone is on a similar vibration so you know we come together because we're looking for more opportunities to listen to trust and follow our loving inner guidance and gain more clarity about how to do that and to support each other in doing it. And, um, you know, that's the way reality works. When the, when the ego mind, see, the mind is all about separation and levels and layers and steps and stages, and it's very interesting and complicated and all that great. But again, the heart is very simple. So, you know, how we integrate, how we serve, how we channel is by continuing to humbly and sincerely bring our focus to being of loving service to each other, to our lives, to the world, and continuing to make that the focus when the drama and the ego and the conspiracy theories and all that pull us out of that center, then we lose our connection. So it's about consciously coming back to what is my intention? What is my higher purpose? Right. Why am I here? What, what am I about? And just knowing that, declaring that, and then spirit will respond, of course. Yeah, awesome. I, I also find that the the more the higher level being that you sort of connect into, those labels do slip away, and they mm -hmm. they pretty much all have the sort of same, you know, they have the same energy. Feel, energy, yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know if this happened to you, but I will just tell you when I when I when I first started channeling, and I would I would tone before I would sort of go into like my trance you don't do you chant do you channel in trance state or not yeah i'm a conscious channel okay so you're you're channeling now as you speak constantly no no i'm i'm but i'm you know i've had 30 years of sitting with the energies over and over so and okay. and focusing on these things so i'm getting some downloads you know I without see. having to go into trance i got you yeah um yeah. But whenever, whenever i would do it there was a moment as i would tone and I can only explain it like the sound coming out of me and me moving sort of up an escalator toward the energy that I was connecting with. That was yes. my sort of feeling. But yes. as I, Good. it was always like a triangle <laughs> that I was mm. moving towards. Right. As I would tone and I would be, have my eyes closed and I would be feeling myself sort of meeting this energy, yes. I would... I would hear Bashar. Mm -hmm. I would hear Roxanne Swainhart. I would hear Rob Gothier. I would hear all mm -hmm. these channelers that I know. Mm -hmm. Also, their energy, like, uh, you know, Bashar is like, hello, good day, good day. And I would hear that. And mm -hmm. I would hear Roxanne, hello, good day, you know, their, their greetings that they had. Mm -hmm. And so I would think to myself, oh, am I going to channel Bashar? Oh, am I going to channel, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. whomever? Mm -hmm. And then the Theos thing would come out of me. Yeah. They're yes. greeting. And I yeah. just thought, wow, they're all sort of standing there next to each other. Exactly. That's right. That's you know? exactly right. And I, and I said this to Roxanne Swainard, who I'm, I'm, I'm friends with, and, and she, she and I laughed about it, but you know, she, you know, we, we both same to the thing that they're kind of in this, on the same, mm -hmm. you know, like, like they're all standing in a line basically. Yeah. And I'm yeah. just sort of following my uh, connection through line yeah. to the energy that is Theos and you, right. your divine love energy. But yeah. probably, you know, it's like a center point where you're plugging in your connection, yeah. for right. lack of a better analogy. That's right. It's all and electricity. It just depends on what your plug is. 
that's, that's how it is coming through. So that was my yeah. experience. I don't know if. Uh, yeah, no, I agree. Like I agree. Yeah, I mean, Lazarus yeah. teaches us that uh, um, all channeling comes through the higher self. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that to be physical is the exception in the universe, not the rule. Mm. So most of most of consciousness is not physical. And so to step in and out of each other and to work together is the way most of the universe consciousness reality is working. So right. we're in these little bodies in time and space thinking this is reality. Right. And, you know, uh, it's an illusion, you know. Well, that was also a big learning for me that um, one of the things Theo told me after a while, you know, I yes. used to say, when people would say to me, because you learn as you go. And that's why I think I said the relationship with whom you're channeling is, is, a, is it's a beautiful exchange because you are constantly learning. And as your sort yeah. of ability to comprehend and expand and you have a sort of basis for what you're being told, it can just continue to expand. But that's I used to say they were an aspect of my higher self. Exactly. But they switched it on me at one moment and they said, actually, yes. Karen, you are an aspect of us. You exactly. are our projection into this right. reality and not right. vice versa, which sort of changed the ego balance of the conceptualism of who mm -hmm. I was in relationship to them. Mm -hmm. me, me sort of having this idea of I'm this sort of, you know, goddess, <laughs> I don't want to say it like that, right. this sort of goddess being walking through the earth with right. all of my guides, you know, Right. Standing beside me, ready to like just give me information. It, not sure. really, but that's a funny analogy. And well, ego is a funny thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and me on. like, oh, you know, <laughs> and then me, real <laughs> then me realizing like, oh, no, I'm actually the vessel that has been filled by them. That's right. To walk yeah. around, not the other yeah. way around. You yeah. know, they're not here yeah. surrounding me. You know, leading the way for me, throwing rose petals as I walk. <laughs> yes, not yet. That time may come, but not Here so I far. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's the yeah. other things. Like things like that is what you learn as you, you go. And then, in a lot of ways, I think they're humbling because you realize, wow, you know, there's so much more at play than yeah. just the experience of channeling. Yes. You know? Yes. There's yes. so much more going on than just. Yeah hi i'm a channel and so we have a lot of people that are either just starting channeling or on the verge of channeling and so yes. we were i was sharing some of those things with them that it's exciting because every one of them will have their own experience yeah. and getting to know their relationship to their higher self that they are actually channeling and they'll learn even more about their own you know existence in that way so that's quite sure. exciting yeah. Oh, yeah. As you said, you said the magic word, my friend. It's about humility. Yeah. You know, and uh, spirit has no illusions about uh, where we stand in the great order of things. And as my guys, my favorite quote recently is build a bridge and get over yourselves, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a question here in the chat uh, from, oh, there's, oh, there's so, quite some questions. Uh, the, the next question from, um, let me see, wait, let me scroll back up. Uh, yeah. Tracy asked, she said, um, can you give your view on past life regressions? And I think that's an interesting topic for a lot of people here. Sure, sure. Yeah, um, yeah I think it's a very valid source of uh, gaining deeper understanding of the themes of your soul, which is a pretty advanced, uh, you know, form of study for any human being on the planet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's a great thing if you feel called to do it or, or to, uh, to get it done. I think it's a good thing. I've, I've had a few of them and they were all very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. There's different ways to do it. You can go through your own meditation. You can have to do like a regression, like with uh, Dolores Cannon kind of regression. Yeah. 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 I haven't done that um, with her um, and not so much. I don't so much focus on my past lives. I'm just trying to get this letter right. <laughs> like I can't, yeah. handle, I can't yeah. handle somebody else's part of my life too. Yeah. Um, Okay. Usually, usually, it's people that are that haven't found the answer to what they're looking for in the current lifetime. Yeah. Well, you know, I, the, we were saying while you were um, dealing with yes. your electronic situation that there's a study that's come out recently uh, from John Hopkins or somewhere like that that, that they're saying that the, that they now have proof that your DNA 
uh, carries memory forward. Yes, right. And yeah. they were focusing only really on the trauma stuff, but they're saying mm -hmm. like people who have sort of these just, you know, fears of situations could have mm -hmm. very well uh, had mm -hmm. a trauma mm -hmm. in a life mm -hmm. and brought mm -hmm. it forward. And, and I think it's also other things. I know, like, I know for a fact, and this is the truth, that the first time I ever went to New York City and the first time I came to Europe, I felt so at home. And the first time I went to New York, I was like, I just feel so like this is my place. And I didn't know much about my family on my father's side, but where I ended up living, and 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 I'm not I'm saying I found this out recently, that my great grandfather, whom I never met, literally lived around the corner from me in New York. And so yeah. I actually did walk the same streets as him. I actually yeah. was in the same area, but I had felt it without any kind of mm -hmm. knowing why. Yeah. So I yeah. think that's definitely a DNA transmission. So a lot of that stuff can come through. So past lives can be probably very valuable in assessing, you know, what you bring forward into well, this yeah, I mean, it's the same theme in every life. It's uh, over and over again, which is, can I find my faith in love rather than be intimidated by fear? Can I be true to love rather than give my power away to 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 fear? And uh, do you think that's true, or do you think that do you think that every human being was so introspective in this way? If you think about other times, you know, where people were. You, you, people, they think about the simpler times and, and maybe the, these big questions that we have these today wasn't really relevant then. Maybe There's always been fear. There's always been fear. I mean, this is why we come to planet Earth looking for balance because there has to be a free will choice between one thing and another. Yeah. So, yeah, so I do. <laughs> I, I, it's I not necessarily always been so intense. Question. She didn't have these big questions when she was younger. And she right, was, but she's, you know, she still had fears to overcome from time to time. Sure, sure. Yeah, fear, uh, the fear part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, you know, it, you come to this world to make peace with change, is the way my guides put it. And when you begin, when we begin to understand, I, I saw somebody say, uh, hey, guys, let's do some channeling. I'm ready to shift into that here in a second. But uh, if we like, but um, yeah, the illusion of separation is what creates fear. And our coming back to our oneness you know, listening, trusting, following, feeling, expressing, honoring, respecting, uh, devoting, serving, uh, inspiring, empowering. These these things bring us back to love. So it's just making conscious choices. Which side of the fence am I standing on and which master uh, am I serving? Right. Okay. So let's, if you're, if you Shall want, I? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, yeah I'd be happy to. Because I wasn't sure if you would go into a channeling state if it was just going to be sort of a conscious channeling situation. No, no, it's fine. Uh, I, when there was all the techno stuff, it was uh, not uh, supportive of that. But now we've got <laughs> no, some stability. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So here we go. You can all close your eyes, take a deep breath if you like. Right, dear friends. Yeah, divine timing. That's, uh, yeah, when you're ready, spirit is ready to go. How do you like that? God bless you, dear friends. Yeah. Here come seven stars, uh, spiral down through time and space, touch the crown, take a nice breath. Relax and release, relax and release, relax and release. The crown, the third eye, the throat, the heart, take another breath. Relax and release, relax and release, relax and release. Dear friends, the will center, the sacral, the root, the hips, the legs, the feet, take a breath. God bless you, dear friends. The heart does know what the mind struggles to remember, you see, to remember. You, you all know who you are, truly, as a spiritual being having a human experience. Uh, but time and space and culture, yeah, and uh, the choices that the soul makes uh, before and during each individual lifetime, yeah, set you on a particular focus. Uh, but truly, uh, the truth is the truth, dear friends, and the wisdom that you possess in your souls is what you've experienced from this and other lifetimes that now uh, you carry with you, yeah? And uh, yeah, more power to you, we say over here, dear ones. The world is in need of your light, your inspiration, your clarity, your humor, dear friends, your humility, your vulnerability, your intimacy, your openness and trust, dear friends, yeah. 
So we're here to uh, celebrate each of you, uh, Archangel Michael and the Arcturians and everyone who wants to be a part of the party, the Pleiadians, dear friends, all of that, yeah. As you said, Karen Theo, God bless you, all of that. Uh, we're not so attached to labels over here on the other side of things as you might be. That's uh, the way we, uh, we, the way we roll as the saying goes, dear friends, yeah. But we're happy to be here with you and dance with uh, any questions or comments you might have, Karen. Okay, um, Micheline has a question. Micheline, I, I can see it from the other chat. Can you? Yes, hi. Hi. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Um, well, thank you for coming. You're about, you're welcome, dear friend. Thank you for inviting. Well, I'm. I would uh, continue this interesting thread about DNA. Um, All right. So um, the DNA and the channeling, and so are they linked somehow? Dear friend, everything is vibration. It's a brilliant question, Micheline. Yeah, God bless you, dear friend. Um, so what the question is, is uh, asking here, uh, spirit, is does the human physical vehicle carry within it uh, programs, uh, energies, uh, messages, memories? Absolutely, it does, you see. And uh, as you open to channel, each and every one of you here, dear friends, you're stepping to, uh, say, the edge of the cliff, yeah? You said uh, uh, ascending the escalator, Karen, God bless you. Yeah, up the mountain we go, yeah? So your DNA is designed to help you to do that. When I feel good, my DNA is extended, I'm broadcasting light here. I'm, I'm setting forth uh, sound. This is from Greg Braden's work, dear friends, mm -hmm. uh, yeah? Uh, when I feel sad or bad or guilty, God bless you, or shamed or humiliated or despairing or depressed or I'm not okay, then you, you constrict and contract within yourself, fear and despair, dear friends, yeah? So your light is not quite so bright. That invites the darkness, the illness, the, the resistance, the struggle, the lack, uh, the, the uncertainty, the confusion, dear friends. So as the vibration of the planet gets higher, it is calling to each of you, and you're all answering the call very nicely, to be conscious of what you're putting in your bodies, in your minds, in your emotional uh, vibration, what, what you're focusing on, the relationships in your lives, how you feel about that, what you think about that, all of that. So the DNA is there to, uh, to shine the light, dear friends, uh, on your path of illumination and enlightenment. The simple truth is, the better you feel, dear friends, the more powerful you will become in this new and wondrous time. Okay. Um, I have a following question about this. We yeah. were talking about meditation. Now, we're big fans so, over here, Michelle. Yeah, big, <laughs> okay. big fans. So, is meditation toning and listening to crystal bowls having an effect on our DNA? Absolutely, dear friend, because it's quieting that busy little mind, that chitter chatter mind, that computer mind that's uh, the clicking of the keyboards upstairs all day long, you see. It's putting you in the deep space, dear friend. Space for grace, we say here. So how does your joy, your peace, your harmony, your balance, your, your love, dear friend, affect your, uh, your physical body and uh, your light body, dear friend? Well, it's, it puts it on maximum is all it does, yeah? It puts it at the higher volume so you can really let the light uh, come uh, to you and through you, dear friend. Let your love uh, be more important, more powerful, than the illusions of separation, you see. It lifts you up, dear friend, in vibration. As you practice these things, then you are sustaining your focus to be open and receptive, non-resistant to the higher, more joyous, more spiritual vibration of yourself, you see. Okay, I, so I'm, I'm gonna continue with this thread because yeah. the questions are coming up. So I'm wondering how long lasting would the DNA be affected after a meditation, let's say like an hour meditation? Dear friend, it's a great question. It's a wonderful question. Let's see if we can get some clarity about that. A few hours, say you're, say this is the answer over here, a few hours. Yeah, sometimes longer, dear friends. See, the, here's the secret, Michelin. It's not, uh, it's the practice, yes, but dear ones, it's also how deeply and fully you're able to open your heart, how safe, how strong, how passionate, how compassionate, how loving you feel in those moments of your your toning and chanting and meditation and all of that. So the better you feel, uh, the more your heart is open, God bless you, and the more your light body is filled up, 
and the, the, the easier that wave carries you forward into your life. If you, you'll know immediately, of course, when you get off your balance, or if you focus on something that's was said that's outside of your truth, then you, you feel that contrast right away. But if you stay uh, receptive to it and uh, interdirected by it uh, for several hours, dear friends, yeah. Okay. I've had some personal experiences. You know, you learn through experience. You do, and only through experience, dear friend, we'll tell you. And I, I had, I lived through this experience where I felt very conscious and very, um, let's say that the, the energy was charged and thick and dense. Yeah, we love it. That's uh, where we live. Welcome home. Group meditation, yes. And I, and, and then I started speaking to the group, you know, how after meditation sometimes is a, there's some time there where everyone is sharing. And I started sharing something that was so beautiful and magical, I didn't even know where it came from. And I only later, weeks later, spoke to Jim Charles about this and with Archangel Raphael. And he told me that it was Archangel Gabriel who came through me. And it was completely, you know, uh, spontaneous. I, right. they, it wasn't premeditated in any way. Um, yes, dear friend, welcome to your spirit. It doesn't need any rehearsal. How do you like that? Yeah. Yeah, it's ready to go, as we said, at a moment's notice. But different, you see, it's not more or less valuable because uh, it's uh, Archangel Gabriel or Divine Love or um, yeah, Aunt Helen and Uncle Henry. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just you give it that value, you see, and that's fine. Yeah, well, the pool What's was there. Yeah. yeah, sorry, dear friend. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I, I'm listening. Well, yeah, we'll just want to say what is valuable is the feeling and the truth, the wisdom, the love that comes through that message. Whatever the words are, dear friend, it's the vibration that really has the greatest value from our point of view. I'm sharing this because we're talking about channeling and, and being students of this. And yeah. it happened to me without me really wanting it to happen, let's say. You know, like it wasn't a conscious thing. I, I, I was surprised and I really didn't know what happened to me. I just thought that... Um, because these words, there was a visceral pull to say these words. I couldn't contain them. Yeah. Well, you got out of your own way, dear friend. We snuck in there while you weren't looking, your God say. Okay. Yeah. And, and I also want to share for others to know that if they weren't all, these words I were saying were pure and they were all positive. But I saw that the reaction of how others felt when they heard these words, not all of them were positive towards me. Who cares, dear friend? We couldn't be less interested in what people think, yeah? No, no, I realize that. I'm just sharing this because you would think that saying something beautiful would have a beautiful effect. <laughs> well, wouldn't that be nice? Then it would all be over and out <laughs> yeah. very quickly, dear friend. There'd be no more arguments, conspiracies, the devil, evil forces. God bless you, dear friend. Yeah, just be settled. There it is. Love, that's the end of it. Done and dusted, yeah? I, I also felt something connected with Assisi in Italy. That place is, is just, even just being in it put me in that same sort of state without the toning, without yeah. any meditation, you know, any meditation. I'm just wondering, is that a, is there a vortex in Assisi? Of course, dear friends. Yeah. St. Francis and the millions of people who've been inspired by this beautiful soul who've come there and uh, opened their hearts and uh, uh, humbled themselves, dear friends. The beautiful prayer there uh, of the essence of that humility. But dear friend, absolutely. You see, what you believe in your heart is your truth, dear friend. And so when you're toning, chanting, meditating, uh, praying, yeah, you're getting the mind out of the way. What will other people think? Uh, am I asking in the right way? Will I say the right words, dear friend? Pish posh, we say. None of that is important. Give yourself like you would to a lover, dear friend, yeah, Un unabashedly, wholeheartedly, yeah. Uh, devotedly, yeah, total surrender. That's the path of uh, freeing your spirit. And then, yes, every single time you do that, dear one, you will be amazed because it's always more than the mind and the ego has imagined possible. That's how you know, dear friend, you see, that spirit is at work in your, in your life and in this wonderful way. Now, I, I don't want to bring any more, uh, any darkness to this thread. Oh, go on. Well, we can take a little okay. contrast, dear friend. Okay. We like the, the sunshine or the shade, however you like to do it. It's just because, you know, when um, Pope, the Pope uh, Francis, he went to Assisi right away. And I just thought, why is he going there? When well, he dear friend, 
Yeah. yeah, we don't care. Do you? No, I just thought, is he going there? Because I had just been to Assisi. I've been there three times. And I thought the first time, I was younger when I went. I was in my 20s when I went the first time. And I and I felt that energy. Then I went into my 30s and then my 40s. And so it, Good for you. And, and, yeah, and every time it was the same feeling. So it, it was just making me think when the Pope went there, did he go there to, to, to get some of this energy or what is it? Why did he go there? Because I, I met a lot of people there and they were talking about how important it was for them, for the Pope to, you know, to, to show up. Well, dear friend, yeah, there, you don't need to worry about other people's agendas. How about that for starters? Yeah, okay. just your own. Yeah. And if they inspire you, if this Pope inspires you, taking the name of Francis and going to Assisi, that's wonderful. And we wouldn't have it any other way. And mm -hmm. dear friend, every time you go to the truth, whether it's in one place or in your own beautiful heart, you are going to be amazed because it's always more than the mind can conceive is possible. That is the nature of love, dear friends. It transcends time and space. So it's not about uh, where you are, dear friends. It's about who you believe you are in any given moment. And to come back to the DNA or your light body or your chakras or your higher self, soul, and spirit, you're living in this wonderful time, Michelin, and everyone here, where you do have a foot in each world now, where you know the old world very well. You've lived it in it many times, dear friends, yeah, many lifetimes. And the new world is a bit fuzzy, a bit hazy, and you're all figuring out... Uh, how do I be a woman in this world, a man in this world, a, a spiritual person in this world, uh, all of those wonderful, a citizen, uh, all of those decisions. But you see, dear friends, you're on the fast track here, we say, because you're putting spirit first in these questions, not last. So there you are at the front of the pack, remembering that you can channel your guides, God Almighty, dear friends, yeah, the love and light of all that is as you. So you see, it's not uh, uh, the preparation so much, dear friends. Preparation's lovely. What you practice, you get better at. But it is the willingness to surrender the mind to the heart and to open the heart to love. And when you can't, won't, or don't, forgive and let go, dear friends. And this is the message of St. Francis. This is the message of all the great saints and enlightened women and men of your world. So you're inspired by all of that, absolutely. Okay, very well. Um, one last, just coming back to the DNA. So is our, is the ability to channel once we start, and if we continue this path of opening our hearts. Yes. I mean, what are the effects, like what are the physical effects, like on the cells, like on the DNA, and what could we expect, what the changes in our bodies? Dear friend, we, you give us great excuse to give you our favorite quote, which is, it's very simple. How good can you stand it? <laughs> okay. Yeah. How much love, joy, inspiration, wisdom, happiness, prosperity, success, and health are you able to handle in any given lifetime? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Brace yourselves, everyone. Put on your seatbelts. Here we go. Yeah. So as you continue to climb up the mountain, dear friends, the, the view is uh, beautiful and the path becomes more narrow. You can't always turn around and do the things and uh, say the things that you did yesterday because there's no joy in it any longer. There's no pull in it anymore. There's no excitement or no, uh, no passion in it. Uh, it's it's uh, one way of being on in your world, dear friends. A beautiful question. One way of being is dying because it needs to die, dear friends. The illusions of separation good, bad, right, wrong, black, white, male, female, up, down, rich, poor, all of that, dear friends, wave bye-bye, yeah? What's coming into your world is more spiritual wisdom, truth, emotional authenticity, power coming to you and through you because you are not any longer giving your power away. So that is uh, our long answer to your very short question. It's going to get better and easier and simpler, and you're going to trust listen and follow with greater devotion and greater greater joyous outcomes. That's what we see. Well, that's amazing. Isn't Thank it, though? <laughs> yes. Yes, and aren't you? And aren't you the lucky ones to get to remember that you're living on heaven, you're living in heaven on earth when you allow yourself to listen to, trust, and follow your loving inner guidance, no matter what other people believe, 
no matter what is happening in the collective, no matter what the news tries to tell you, dear friends, you are the creator of your reality. There are no exceptions. Take a deep breath, everyone. Thank you for All that. All right, you're very welcome. Mm, we have, um, thank you, uh, Micheline. Thank you. Thank Ava you. has a question and then Lana has a question. And then I have some questions from the chat, so. Yeah. Mm, um, hi. Um, I very recently find out that the reason I am so important to the negative reptilian forces is that I'm protecting the library in, in of knowledge, which is in the planet Earth. Um, well, the fa that fact made me extremely happy, you know, that I'm actually doing something here, really made me very happy. I have a question. Is, I know that I am connected to the Lemurian crystals. Is this library of knowledge in these crystals as well? I want to ask, since it makes me feel so good that I am doing something positive, is, is there anything else I am doing? Well, dear friend, it's a wonderful story. We want to keep hearing more about uh, you and uh, the library and Lemuria and crystals. Uh, we don't have anything to contribute to what you've said here, dear one, because it's that is not personally our, our relationship to to you or to your, your earth or to reality. Wherever you found that information, we would invite you to keep uh, gaining more clarity. But dear friend, the truth of it is, from our point of view here, dear Eva, that uh, this earth is a library, God bless you, dear friend, uh, of consciousness that's held in not only the DNA of humanity, but the plants and the minerals, the crystals to be sure, the animals uh, that are here. Uh, dear friend, this is a living, breathing consciousness that you're uh, living on right now. You can absolutely call it a library. Lemuria has been a part of that story. Uh, other civilizations before and since, yeah. What we ask you, dear friend, to do is to uh, yeah, trust those uh, sources of information that inspire you to take action here and now in the physical 3D and 5D reality that you see around you, because that's really why you're doing all that deep inner work in the sleep state, the dream state, the astral state, dear friend, is so you can come out to this world and help people understand what's possible. Does it make sense? Yeah, it's done. It's all, it makes sense. It's all connected, definitely. Right. Right. So, dear friend, it's not about what you do in the other planes that's so important in this world. It's how you can bring what you do or will do or have done, dear friend, what you understand personally, that you can translate into uh, what other people are seeking answers for here and now on planet Earth. To be the teacher, the inspiration, the guide, the channel is, uh, dear friend, to live in the truth as you perceive it and to help other people find their ability to do the same. There are many different, uh, you know, teachers and teachings and ideas, and uh, it's wonderful. But uh, what uh, we need you to do is to put your feet on the floor and walk into life every day in a way that is meaningful and joyous for you, dear friend, and not feel uh, uh, beholden or um, uh, yeah, duty bound to things that are happening in other realities at the expense of this uh, this lifetime uh, for you here and now. Does it make sense? Yes. <laughs> oh, good. Well, we love when it makes sense. Sense is our best friend over here, yeah? See, it's easy to say anything, dear friend, and that's fine. And if there's truth to it, then you bring that into your daily life and you live that in one form or another. That's what life is about. You live your beliefs in your daily experience and you and your world are blessed by that. So again, we're not saying that your information is wrong. We're just saying, how do you bring that out into your daily experience? That's that's our focus with you. Does it make sense? Does it help you? It does. I have to a little bit meditate on that. It definitely yes. is my life energy and uh, vibration, this kind of yeah. information. So my yeah. outlook on that life changes immediately because of that. But uh, I do have to kind of meditate on this. Yes. Be our guest, dear friend. We will lovingly uh, support you. And dear friend, you are, uh, like everyone here, God bless you, an old soul, a wise, powerful spiritual being who is called to a great and heroic task, which is to help humanity remember 
that they are spiritual. And you cannot prove this to anyone. You can only prove it to yourself. And you do it, dear one, by, as you have, opening your heart and letting truth inspire you. You understand? Yes, thank you. You're very welcome. God bless you, dear friend. Um, Lana has a question. Thanks, Eva. It's a nice question. Lana? Yes, uh, good morning. Greetings. Thank you. Yes, hello, hello. For making this possible. <laughs> you betcha. Um, thank you. I, uh, growing up and, and now, too, surrounded by many powerful personalities. Yeah. Like very unique and just, just very, uh, uh, very strong and, and, and very just significant, uh, indifferent. And well, now that I'm in the, yeah. in the Support, position. Now, supportive or confronting? You tell us, yeah? All, all, all of them, all, all different ones, but all very um, advanced in their own direction that they're taking. <laughs> so, right. Sounds like I humanity. Yes, we understand. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, you know, as I was making my way through that forest of personalities, I um, now now I can actually observe it with appreciation. And I have a lot of fun and, and, and enjoyment studying human psyche. And, um, and I find like I can assume like a neutral position and, um, and that's making it enjoyable because I, I can, you know, appreciate them uh without imposing my own worldview so um th there is a question um that has to do with there's certain things that i cannot tap in within myself to help me understand humanity as you said and one of them is the um need to avoid feeling some people that that have met uh, they just at all costs they don't want to feel yeah something yeah, well, um, it's fear. It's fear. And how, fear. What is the best way to like um, bring them in and um, kind of, you know, show them where I'm going and show them that where they're going is. <laughs> Dear friend, is, just love yeah. them. Love them without surrender. Yeah, give them a hug and a kiss and a cuddle, and say it's safe for you to feel your feelings with me. Yeah, because that's what I'm all about. I'm a big heart. Big heart chakra, yeah? And you're a lover, dear friend, yeah? And you want people to, uh, you, you want to shake them and wake them, dear lady, God bless you, yeah? You want to help them uh, feel safe, loved, and supported as we do here with you. So, uh, dear friend, you be the example of what living in your heart looks like and feels like and how fun it is, how liberating it is, how freeing it is, you see. Does it make sense? It makes sense. Thank you so much. I, uh, um, I just have to come up with ways to put it into practice. But well, you see, different, don't, don't, part. don't, yeah, bless you. Absolutely. We're all behind you 100% over here. See, dear lady, um, you learn to live from the inside out by um, intensely caring about how you feel. You understand? Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What does Abraham say? Be selfish enough so that how you feel is the most important thing in your life at any given moment. You're, mm. as you said, you were challenged, confronted uh, one way or another by uh, uh, dominant, demanding, uh, yeah, impossible personalities. We'll, we'll just throw that word in there, dear friend. God bless you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, you got to let us, let us give you that one. So, dear friend, now it's your turn. You see, now you're in the, you're in the driver's seat, dear friend. Now you say, uh, this is what I believe life is about. This is what I am about. I'm the teacher of the things that I believe. These are my values. And I'm going to be feeling like crazy over here, happy, sad, excited, etc., uh, etc. Et and uh, if you want to come on this ride with me, this is what it's going to feel like for you. How do you like that? I love it. <laughs> well, dear friend, we'll settle for that any day of the week. It's, yeah? it's very, um, I, I love it because it makes me smile. It's very simple, but it's just concentrated everything that I, I needed to to do into one simple concept so dear, yeah that's right it yeah. is simple it is simple dear lady love is extraordinarily simple you see in the mind and the personality and the ego wants to complicate everything and say good bad better best higher lower yeah right wrong pish posh yeah 
do what <laughs> you are inspired to do. Thank you. Do what you are inspired to do as long as you're inspired to do it. Yeah. And when you're inspired to do something else, then move to the next thing you're inspired to do. And dear ones, when you don't know what you're inspired to do, then go within and turn back to peace and uh, clean your side of the glass again and appreciate how far you've come and how uh, how how much uh, love is flowing into your life and into your heart, dear friend. You see, no one needs to know that you're loving yourself, that you're giving yourself to God, to God, Goddess, all that is, that you're on a spiritual journey. Uh, what they want is to uh, find uh, those that are in a similar vibration to where they're at to help them make the next step. And you're a beautiful, uh, a beautiful guide to in, in invite people to trust themselves more and to live more from the heart and less from the head. How do you like that? I like that. I will not be pulled in into, and, I, and I've already developed uh, ways to not to be pulled in into that vibration where, where they want me to be. And, well, you see, uh, friend, once again, it's thank you. We're just going to yeah. say, you just recognize when people are controlling or dominating or intimidating, they are afraid. And that mm -hmm. doesn't make them right. That makes them deeply in need, you see. Fear is the most uncomfortable thing in the universe, dear friends. And people only go there because they think, believe, they do not have a choice. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the victim consciousness that you're all waking up from and healing and letting go of. So when you realize beautiful, brave soul that you are, everything is a choice and I want to make my choices consciously and continue to choose love and peace over drama and uh, struggle, then dear friend, you come back to peace, you center yourself and then you get inspired what to do or say next, do you understand? All right, I, I do look forward to that. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. You're welcome. Well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, Karen, I'm gonna need to, uh, to, to leave it there for the moment if you don't mind for today. Okay, sure. There was yeah. one last question in the Go chat. On. It was yeah. a very nice question. It was about do you, yeah. do you have anything to say about gargoyles? No. <laughs> okay. No, but sweetheart, thank you so much. Yeah, I got to share my space with my housemate here and he needs okay. to get in the kitchen. So it's been a joy. Well, Peace and blessings. You, you can thank find you. me. At, thank you. You can find me at lumartin.eu or follow me on Facebook and I'll be on tonight for a spirit talk at 10 p.m. And aren't you doing something tomorrow for a live? Uh, yes, yes, I'll do a live Q&A. Thank you, uh, 9 p.m. tomorrow night on Zoom. And uh, I'll, I'll put that link is uh, on my Facebook page as well. Okay, all right. So on this Facebook page, Lou Martin, and also, can, and if you can't find the Facebook page, go to loumartin.eu and that'll send you back to the Facebook page. So it's 9 p.m. your time, right? Yes, 9 p.m. Ireland time, not okay. Scotland. <laughs> So that that would be uh, oh what is that? That would be. You'll figure it out. That'll be that'll be four p.m. Uh, U.S. time. Right. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank Peace you very much. Thank you. 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 So much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me move it to everyone. So everyone, uh, we're we're ending just a little bit early. Um, but uh, I see that in the chat, Treasure Hunter is saying, go look up um, Brad Johnson's Blue Room. Uh, it's in part of Brad Johnson's uh, New Earth Teachings. I will definitely check that out. I don't know if that's just for me or for everyone else. Blue Room Light Therapy. I will look, I will look for it. It's a healing center in uh, BC, Canada. I'll definitely do that. Um, I just want to tell everyone, thank you so very much for being here. Next week, it'll be Jim Charles. It'll be back. And then in two weeks, we have a special channel coming on called uh, Yana Hopman. She is a, uh, she communicates with the Hathors, with the Pleiadians, and she works with um, Stargates. So she, she's, a, she's a quite wonderful teacher and channel, and she'll be here uh, in two weeks. So next week, Jim, then Yana, then Jim. Then yeah, somebody else. So check the website, hukalo.org. If you would like to join uh, and become a part of the Hukalo community, you can you can join for $10 a month and it gives you access to all of the upcoming channelings that are done uh, by Jim and also first access to any of our classes. On Friday night, we have a practice channeling session. Um, you can find that on YouTube, um, YouTube. You can find it on Facebook, and it's the Hukalo 
a channeling practice group. You can join that and you can join us on Friday nights. And then the last thing is that on the 16th through the 21st of August, you have the Ascension Retreat in Dansville. And that will be uh, $400 for five nights. It includes your food, it includes your lodging, and it also includes your classes for uh, galactic Reiki, for telepathy, and also for channeling. And then daily channelings by Jim Charles and Max Rempel. And just a lot of fun with a lot of people. So hopefully you can join there. And you can also find that on the hukalo.org website. So till next time, till next week, God bless, namaste. Is there anyone who wants to give a blessing before we go? Out. Ava, Lana, Steve, Christine. Mine is just blessed be. Awesome. Very, very calm. Blessed be. Anyone else? Love to all. <laughs> okay. Well, well, uh, well, just, well. I just, I, go ahead. I, I can only add that, you know, it just made me feel very happy just sitting and, and listening. I just felt this feeling of happiness just to be here. So. Oh, well, thank you. Um, it was a, it was I appreciate a pleasure you. to be with all of you guys. It's always nice to see each other every week and be able to share our stories, our questions, and to know that we're all busy working on ourselves and our growth and trying to see the world in the best possible light. So that's not only my thankfulness to you, but it's just also my prayer that we all just, you know, can find the God in each one of us and, and we remember our oneness. So with that, Love to everyone and blessed be. So namaste. Thank you. Same to you Thank all. You. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You, Karen, Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Bye-bye.